Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So we have another big update that came out from the flow just recently, and it starts off with the PS4 up to firmware 11 and the PS5 up to firmware 8.20 were vulnerable to this CVE. And he says, I will be sharing the details about successful exploitation at TythoonCon, which is a conference this is coming up just next month. So let's just get this out of the way right now. For the PlayStation 4 11.0 and lower, I absolutely believe we're going to have a brand new jailbreak just within the next couple of months. Um, I might would even say weeks on that with what I know and at least my experience so far in kind of watching this and reporting on this. And, and then for the PlayStation 5, again, I don't think that is a big priority at the moment. I know it would let people go up to 8.20, but I'll be honest, I don't really know anybody that has even PlayStation 5's own firmware 8.20. I think the PlayStation 5 is doing such a great job at auto-updating consoles this generation. You're not going to find these 8.20 machines just sitting around somewhere. So with that out of the way, let's learn a little bit more. So if we go ahead and we jump into that Hacker One report, you can see right here we already have some code, which typically what happens with this is, is that that code becomes available maybe in a Hacker One report. And then other well respected folks from the scene, folks like Spectre Dev, help put that into a format where obviously the rest of the general public can go ahead and start playing and being able to run or to jailbreak your system. Now, what I find really neat about all of this is, is that if we go back over, we can see that this talk was titled right around PlayStation 4 kernel RCE. Now, what's interesting about that is, is that I discussed this just about two months ago where I was like, this is not a PlayStation 4 only kernel RCE. I think even in this, I was like, no way, the flow. This is definitely for the 4.11.00 and for the PlayStation 5 at 8.20 and under. So anyway, it's a kind of an interesting watch to kind of go and see what has happened in the past in this video from two months ago versus what Andy just said yesterday. Now, even if you go over to the conference page, what you will see here is, is that it still has the title just PlayStation 4 Remote Code Execution. So again, there's lots of mentions with PlayStation 4. And I think a lot of that is obviously because these talk titles have to be submitted super early, but also he couldn't really give anything away about, oh yeah, this is also going to affect the PlayStation 5, which is a much, much bigger target. Now, what you can do right now, if you want to go ahead and check this out, I made a demo on how you could actually run this proof of concept yourself on a PlayStation 4. And you can do the same exact thing on a PlayStation 5. So I show you where the script is that was created. And basically, you can just follow this guide right here. Step by step, we'll install Python. We'll get it all running. And then at the end of it, you'll be able to see it working just like this. There it goes. Okay. Okay, and the dates that we are going to be looking at is going to be right around May 27th through the 31st. Well, anyway, I hope you got something out of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Michael, out!